Hello and welcome to this session by Microfocus on a new feature introduced in UFT1 15.0.1 where we've introduced the capability to leverage artificial intelligence's computer vision to recognize objects rather than traditional object repositories. We will not be covering all of the new features in 15.0.1, just focusing on this individual feature. My name is Don Jackson. I'm an ADM solutions architect in North America with experience in this field of test automation of greater than 20 years. So let's talk a little bit about um, the, the personas that are uh, in the, the test automation market today, right? So there's the shift left persona uh, that we've all, that have has come into being over the past five-ish years. Uh, which are dev testers, they are shift left uh, users uh, living inside of their IDE, they're very familiar with code, they're very comfortable with code, uh, they want to write code in their own language that they write the application code in. Then there's the, the middle guy uh, who is a test automation engineer, very familiar with test automation over the past 20-ish years. Uh, familiar with building frameworks, uh, familiar with uh, the code uh, that the test automation uh, application uh, leverages for its test automation in the case of UFT1 VB script. And then there's the shift right uh, persona, which is really a business analyst or domain user. Uh, and they are uh, afraid of tests, uh, af not afraid of tests, but afraid of code they uh, focus on the business process and understand the business process and the workflows, and uh, they need to be able to contribute to coverage. So the challenges in test automation is uh, the pace of applications uh, are very, very fast now and are getting faster uh, with the adoption uh, and transformation into, into a DevOps culture. There is the challenge of low automation coverage because of a skills barrier. And then there's also a challenge of high maintenance costs. We have customers who, uh, on average, customers say that they spend about 40% of their time for test automation on maintaining existing assets. Uh, so the ability to move the needle and increase test coverage is, is, uh, is uh, very much reduced by uh, having to focus on maintenance. So let's talk about the AI major research areas. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but these are the, the inside of the IT industry, the major areas of research. And we are gonna focus, uh, we are focusing in microfocus on these particular three research areas. Uh, natural language processing, uh, so being able to understand natural language uh, in, when it comes to test case design so that you can write in plain English and the system will be able to interpret that in, and uh, run automation uh, straight off of your, your natural language. Machine learning uh, with both aspects of supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning is where uh, we teach the, the neural network and build the neural network to uh, have it, to tell it what this object is, and then unsupervised is uh, using confidence level, uh, and it builds confidence uh, during the run, and then perception of computer vision. We are not going to talk about the natural language processing uh, with the release of Codeless, uh, uh, and if you have additional questions about that, feel free to make, reach out to your MicroFocus account team. So let's jump right into the functional testing powered by AI. So this is a script that, that I've developed uh, that has, uh, that is a very simple script that goes against a Fiori shopping cart uh, using traditional object recognition. You can see inside of the object repository, I have many objects that I would have to maintain, and as uh, changes to that application would occur, I'd have to maintain those uh, those uh, object properties for those individual objects uh, in the object repository. So we're going to go ahead and run this script so that you can get an idea of what the script looks like. Uh, one, one thing to note is you are seeing UFT1 in dark mode, which is also a new feature that was introduced. So this is a simple uh, shopping cart application hosted by SAP on the SAP S4 HANA platform uh, in their SaaS environment. And it clicks on laptops 
uh, clicks on the first laptop, then the second one, adds it to the cart, verifies it's in the cart, deletes it from the cart, and then goes back to the starting point because it's always a good idea to start and stop your, uh, your test at the exact same point so that it can iterate. So what we've introduced inside of, uh, uh, as part of this release, we have a, uh, in the ADM marketplace, a function library that you can add to your existing tests which I've already downloaded for the sake of time. It's called AI Awareness. So if you search on the uh, on the ADM Marketplace, uh, Microfocus Marketplace for AI Awareness, it will bring uh, bring up that uh, that function library that you can download. So now, if I replay that script, uh, what this function library is doing is the objects that you interact with. It's going to, one, uh, highlight it in the application so that it can show you what it is doing when it grabs a snapshot. Uh, grab a snapshot and then uh, leverage our neural network to determine whether or not that object could be replaced with a AI uh, SDK object uh, and thus have to remove, uh, be able to remove uh, dependency on traditional object recognition and the underlying object properties, which we all know is one of the root causes for the high maintenance of, uh, of test automation because object properties change. So you can see it does, uh, uh, you need to be aware that this function library will slow down the execution of your script because it's got to do all this extra work and it's writing it out to the uh, to the report, so uh, be aware of that when you are uh, leveraging this asset. And it's uh, just completing now, and uh, as it finishes, we will uh, bring up the report so you can see what this looks like. So if I bring up the last run resort results, you can see that there are custom AI actions here that tell you uh, uh, some wonderful information. So uh, in my script, I have a command called uh, web element laptops object click and it is uh, this object right here here's the picture of what it looks like and it could be replaced with AI util find text by block laptops so I could go into my script and I could replace this statement right here with this statement with a dot click and comment that out. And if this is working, then I could also go in and, and update my object repository to no longer uh, contain that object if that's the only place that I'm using that object. Now, if I go through and do that for all of the uh, all of the items on the report, this is what the script ends up looking like. And if I clean up my object repository, This is what my object repository looks like. As you can see, it's empty. It only has the root shopping cart uh, browser. It doesn't have anything else uh, underneath it anymore. And if I run this, uh, you can see it run that same business process against the, uh, the Fiori shopping cart application. So we're gonna just let this run real quick and you'll see it's gonna click on laptops. One thing to note um, is that uh, the execution uh, of an AI driven script is slightly slower than traditional object repository because it is scanning the entire screen looking for the object as you've defined it uh, and leveraging that neural network. Um, but as you can also see from the demonstration here is that the, uh, the uh, amount of overhead from a time perspective uh, is far outweighed by the benefits of not having to maintain your uh, object repository. And this is now wrapping up. Uh, the last step of the of the script here is to collapse the, the shopping cart, uh, which it's about to do here shortly. And that's the end of the script. And UFT1 is going to come back into focus. We can look at the last run results. And you can see now in my run results, instead of having my traditional web element click, I've now got this find by text block laptops click. And one of the things that you'll note is that rather than uh, the individual little object, it's actually showing you the entire screen of what uh, uh, what was displayed to the user and where it found it and highlighting it with a confidence level on that as well. So just to summarize, uh, the test automation challenges that we had earlier 
right? So how does uh, how do we address those here at Microfocus? Um, we have increased reliability because as you make changes to the uh, to the application, as long as visually it's still recognized, uh, for example, uh, the laptops is still laptops. Uh, it doesn't matter what the HTML tag underneath it is or uh, the XPath, if you're comparing that to Selenium changes, doesn't matter, it's still gonna be recognized. We didn't really talk about uh, the skills barrier uh, with Codeless, uh, that's something for a separate session if, and contact your MicroFocus account team if you'd like to see that. And then we address the high maintenance cost because we're reducing that maintenance uh, with uh, being able to recognize the objects visually. One huge benefit of that is when you look at it in a mobile context, uh, being able to recognize visually, uh, it will recognize on an iOS and an Android device, which have completely different properties from an object repository's perspective, it will recognize those objects as the same objects and you can have a single script uh, across multiple platforms. Additionally, if your application is, is built so that it uh, has the same flow, on a mobile device and a desktop browser, uh, you could have a single script that does desktop browser and mobile devices. Thanks for taking the time today. And as I stated, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to your MicroFocus account team. Have a great day.